You are now listening to the Men of Iron podcast. Men of Iron equips men and grows godly leaders through one-to-one mentorships. Thanks for listening. Today's episode is brought to you by Buck's Lawn Care Service. For all your mowing, mulching, and trimming needs this spring, call Buck. Find Buck's Lawn Care Service on Facebook or call 717-808-2712. Welcome to the Men of Iron Podcast, Episode 4. My name is Steve Glick. I'm sitting here with my partner in crime, Garrett Barbush. Hola. Como Hola. esta? <laughs> Muy bien. Y tú, yep. We Same. are. We are here with our special guest, Justin Watkins. Justin, what's going on? Hey, how you guys doing? JW. JW, yeah. the new hire at Men of Iron. The final hazing to come on board. <laughs> this is just the first. Oh, yeah. This is the first of many. So, Jay, just tell us a little bit about yourself, because for, you know, our Men of Iron advocates and supporters and viewers of the podcast, you are brand new to the show. Brand new. Yeah. Man, uh, well, I'll start with my wonderful wife, because she's the best part of me. Uh, So my wife, Jenna, and we have, uh, we've got two kids, uh, out of the womb at least right now. Our son, Jansen, uh, who's seven. Our daughter, Jared, just turned four, and we have a baby girl due in June. So uh, that's 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 the family. We live down in Willow Street. So Willow Street, Pennsylvania. What yeah. is the that's a good booming place to live. metropolis of Willow Street? What's going on in that booming metropolis? Yeah. <laughs> We're getting some big stuff in there right now. We got like a Fulton Bank coming in. <laughs> We've got a city. It's crazy yes. down there, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. You got the Harley Davidson, right? Oh yeah. Is that considered Willow Street? Oh yeah, that's Street? like yeah. uh that's one of the hubs of Willow Street PA. Yeah. Harley Davidson. Yeah, Ashley and I are lucky to live literally right next door, so you know, oh, when it, next to Harley. Yeah, so yeah. when it comes to, like, Saturday morning motorcycle trainings, oh, yeah. it gets a little rowdy. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you get over there and get rambunctious with the group? <laughs> Not too often. Okay. <laughs> didn't, didn't know. Well, for those of you that don't know, we'll, we'll let Janet Justin kind of finish his uh, introduction here, but Direct Justin is the new director of development with Men of Iron, and uh, so you can fill them in about what that job entails and a little bit more about yourself. So Willow Street, Jenna. What else you got for us, JW? Yeah. All right, man. I'm trying. Like, I feel like I should get the wow factor and to figure out what's the best thing about me. <laughs> well, that's what Take Five's for. Okay, yeah. so yeah. this is just like the basic boring stuff. <laughs> so I'm the director of development, and uh, and so yeah, just raising raising awareness, relationships, and funds for what we do, uh, and partnering with our advocates and supporting their engagement uh, with the ministry. So. And he's otherwise known as the Silver Fox. Yeah. Yeah, that, that started maybe like day two. Yeah. Last I don't even week. Know if it was day two. It, it might have been, been day, day one, one, but it's yeah. it's gonna stick for some time. Yeah. 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 It's, I embrace that. It's hard to beat. It is a hard it's a great nickname. <laughs> I would embrace that nickname. Yeah. I think it called a lot worse than that. Which, oh, yeah. by the way, I, at one point, uh, just a side note, I was asked one time by a guy if I dyed my hair this way. Like not the flip side. <laughs> like, hey, did you dye your hair that way? I was like, I, I wasn't sure if he was joking. Cause I was like, I mean, no, no, I did not. He's like, because oh, it looks great. And I, and more people, I mean, apparently it's more, more common with, I guess, women who are dyeing their hair. Oh, okay. A little bit of the streaks hmm. of gray. So I'm not in, I'm not in the loop on that one, yeah. but uh, you look good. Thank yeah. you. Well, you know who else they call the silver fox is Chase Utley. Chase Utley, huh? Yeah. I always... I always have to throw a Philadelphia sports yeah, reference into these podcasts. Philly. Oh, yeah. Journey. They're from Philadelphia. <laughs> no, they're actually from San Francisco. <laughs> oh, man. So let's do take five with Justin. He uh, already explained a little bit about himself, but this will this will be a little fun to help yeah. us get to oh, know Jay a little bit more. These, questions. these are going to be good. You, you have like three seconds to respond. Or three else. seconds. Three, yeah. three seconds. All right, Jay. Take five. Question one. Favorite movie? Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> That's such a hard question. <laughs> To give three <laughs> seconds. It, it, you know, just give us a couple. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go with what I've always gone with. Uh, a river runs through it. Hmm. Do you know it? Wow. I don't. Do you know I, it? I, Brad, I, Brad Pitt. Oh, it's an, the fly fishing. Fly fishing. Yeah, it's a great, okay. it's a great okay. play. Yeah, and I feel like I should hmm. say Vision Quest yeah. just because of. Yeah, because of wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By That's the way, I'm not a wrestler. Tired. He just got a raise. <laughs> <laughs> going up the ladder. All right, take five, question two. Who inspires you? Jesus. Man, were, wow. That was <laughs> so holy. All right, question three for take five. Most memorable childhood memory? Oh, man. 
All right, I'll just uh, I I love I, this will be good for you. I, my dad and I used to go to the Phillies. Mm. Uh, he got partial season tickets, so he'd take one of us boys nice. and go see some games. So good stuff. Yeah. All right, I like it. So this is a little sports related as well because we know that Justin is a diehard Philadelphia 76ers fan, and he's a I forgot about basketball this. fan. Yeah, he plays yeah. basketball. Um, obviously enjoys watching it. Balling. Yeah. Balling. So where will LeBron James play next year? I think he's going to stay in Cleveland. Yeah, I think he's going to stay in Cleveland. I think so, too. You know, for the, for the sake of the city of Cleveland, I hope he stays in Cleveland. <laughs> it's just going to burn. <laughs> uh, even though, and I, I know he brought them a title, but I would, it'd be cool to see him in Philly as well. But Yeah, I don't I think that's going to happen. I see him leaving his roots again, but no. I don't know. Maybe the struggle is real in Cleveland. It, we all know it is. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cleveland Brown fans, they need LeBron. You know? Oh, yeah. He should join. The, maybe that's where he's doing. He's going to stay in Cleveland, but he's going to play for the Browns. Oh, man. Hey, there's a take. Put him out in tight end. <laughs> yeah. He'd be unstoppable. Oh, yeah. All right. Final question, Justin, is favorite place you've traveled to? Favorite place I've traveled to? Oh, these are terrible like quick answer questions. You know this is really bad. This is no, well, this is the point of it. All right, great. Well, so quit complaining. Uh, <laughs> answer the question. Uh, I'll say Hong Kong <laughs> just because it was really unique and it's the first. I've only been there once. And you so traveled there. That wasn't long ago. That no, was that was hope, right? yeah, like last year. Yeah, this actually like I might have been in Hong Kong right now a year ago. Yeah, so that was cool. So just a bit of a side note. We'll wrap up take five here. But Justin uh, has been kind of a previous career youth ministry started out as a youth, uh, youth pastor uh, from there he and Jenna went to the Milton Hershey school in Hershey Pennsylvania and you guys were house parents there I'd love yeah. for you just to share a little bit about what you've yeah. been saying to some of our advocates like it's either really good or really bad depending on the second you know did you just share <laughs> yeah. a little bit about what that yeah. role was so and yeah we, and if you're not familiar with Milton Hershey you can look them up online but essentially you know we were house parents for 12 middle school girls in one home uh, who are coming from a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, brokenness, uh, yeah. some done to them and some not uh, any of their, you know, they're doing. And uh, I, I just, you want me to say what I kind of mentioned on Saturday, yeah, you, know? Like, yeah. you know, we had, uh, you know, just the absence of fathers, I think yeah. was a, such a big theme of, of those, those students that were there. And particularly in our, in our house, we had like 10, 10 of our 12 girls not to have, didn't have a, a father figure really involved at all mm. uh, and probably our hardest our hardest situation was one of our girls father had murdered her mother when she was four her and her four siblings lived uh, with grandma in inner city city philly and couldn't you know she couldn't take care of them so they were at the nice. school you imagine how much that impacts and influences your perspective and behavior so um yeah, just uh, just really powerful uh, example of what that looks like. And I know it's like a very serious matter, but I mean, at the same time, I thought it was like you were very vulnerable when you were sharing this on Saturday. Like it was either like the best thing in the <laughs> yeah. world to be doing yeah. as a house parent or the absolute worst thing in the world. And it really varied by a minute to minute. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you're like, wow, I can't believe we're so invested in this, you know, this ministry to these girls. And then the next minute be like, we got to get out of here. Like this is so, this is hard. You imagine 12 middle school girls oh, that's funny, in man. one house coming from where they're coming from. But yeah. Well, then from, from Milton Hershey, this is how I was introduced to Justin, was uh, he spent time as a regional rep there uh, in the development side for Hope International, which uh, we at Men of Iron love. We love Hope. Uh, we love their leadership, love their mission and what they do. Uh, if you don't know much about them, you can check out them. Their website, hopeinternational.org. But Justin, maybe just explain a little bit about mm -hmm. what you learned there and how you think that's going to benefit you here at Men of Iron, all that good stuff. Yeah, I'm, my wife and I were involved with Hope since 2008 and just love the ministry and the work that they're doing around the world and how they're doing it, uh, but also the people and the, the culture, the community and leadership that, that, that are there. Uh, and so I was in my role for about four years, a little under four years, and yeah, they just they do things really well, and I think the, my heart for fundraising and relationships is is that it's ministry. I mean, this is a partnership, uh, and so we're doing kingdom work, and and so meeting with 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 people who've been impacted by the ministry, or, or want to invest in the ministry, uh, to just how do we do ministry together? This is what this is about. It's about relationship, and it's not it's not just about dollars and cents at the end of the day. It's about what God's doing. So, amen. amen. Yeah. Well, 
That's Justin, awesome. we're stoked to have you on board, man. I don't <laughs> know, Stevie, what you've noticed the first yeah. couple of days with him around here, yeah. but it's just uh, I'm just so excited about the future and uh, just grateful to have you, man. So yeah, we're thrilled to have you. you, man. Welcome to the team. Thank you. So, so uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so um, today's topic for the podcast is the victory in Christ, our victory in Christ. And this idea of talking about this today was kind of actually spurred on by Justin at our training on Saturday. Right. He got the chance to come up and introduce himself, and then he decided he was going to preach. Yeah. And he brought it. <laughs> he brought it. He brought the fire. <laughs> I think G almost closed in prayer after, I, after I, Justin. I wanted to. I was like, That's all I've got. I can't talk <laughs> that. But you just, um, yeah, you just spoke to the men there, and you talked about living in that uh, sense of victory and freedom in what Jesus has already done on the cross mm-hmm. instead of living in that, you know, state of defeat, I think, as, as men, we too often do. Yeah. Um, so that's going to kind of be our topic of conversation today. So I don't know if, Justin, you want to speak a little bit into what you kind of talked about on Saturday and take yeah. it from there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I think it, and it was a, something another man had just shared with me a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about this idea of power and God's, God's power in our life. And he was just kind of, he was running through some of the things that he was coming out of and he just mentioned, you know, we, we see ourselves as fighting for victory, right? We have goals. We want to be a better husband. We want to father our kids. We want to stand up from under, you know, temptation, whatever it is, goals for work, for family. And those are good, but we kind of take the, the stance usually of, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm working towards this and I'm, and I'm fighting for victory in these areas. And you, you look at scripture, it's, it's just clear. You could pull, I, mean, I would argue you can pull up through, through the Old Testament too, but all throughout the New Testament, it's victory has already happened. It is not that we're fighting for that victory. You know, we're really incapable of doing that. I mean, you can look at anything, even if you're trying to, to go for that and on that route, you're, you're going to fail. Uh, we don't have the capacity to get that victory. But victory has already been won. Mm. Victory, we are fighting from a place of victory. And that's a very different, it's, you know, it's just a slight distinction. It kind of sounds fun to say, you know, fighting from victory instead of for victory, but it's really true. And it changes how we approach those goals and how we approach our life because we know it's not in us and it's already been accomplished. Right. And I think that is such a great, like when I heard you say that, and just even now where you're like, I think it's throughout the Old Testament too. Like we, we do see that throughout the Old Testament. Yep. The Old Testament is so relevant to the whole story. Yeah. Because we know, you know, that <laughs> with, with th- this is where the, the the picture was being painted, if you will, of, of what was coming, mm-hmm. right, for God's people. But, like, I just love stories, uh, and, and I say stories, but the history of Abraham, men like Abraham and uh, Moses and whoever it might be. But, you know, when you read through their accounts— it says that God credited them with righteousness, not because of what they did, right? Mm-hmm. Look at these goals and objectives, and not because they, but because they had faith, right? And I think that if we, if we are going to have that mentality and that philosophy of victory has already been won, like I'm fighting, I'm fighting from victory, right? Mm-hmm. There's a faith in that. There's a faith element, and with that faith comes a blessing, right? right. And I think this all ties in so heavily and so influentially into mentorships is because yeah we're men of iron and we want guys to accomplish things and get things done and and at the end of the year or the end of a quarter say yeah here here are the things that I said I wanted to do now I've done them but there's also that really fine balance of like hey listen we don't want you to feel like your righteousness is going to come from getting these things checked Mm -hmm. off like that's not what it's about right But the righteousness is coming in the fact of like your faith in Christ, that's where you're fighting from and that's the victory, right? Right. Like that, Mm -hmm. that in and of itself is what we should be striving for. Mm -hmm. And that's, I I struggle with that. I struggle with that as a Mm -hmm. man because I do find that contentment and peace when I get things done and check them off, right? But my true contentment and my true peace should be in the fact that, hey, this is already won, man. I get to do Mm -hmm. this. So I don't know if you guys have it in there. Yeah, I think, you know, we see that a lot in what we do in uh, men's mentoring with guys who are coming into the program, and it's kind of like a last straw for them. And they're, you know, they've been going through life, and they're just doing the same old thing, whether it's, you know, being a husband, being a father, you know, 
in their careers and they're continuing to check those things off and it just they're not finding that contentment that they're searching for and i think it's because they're living in that kind of state of defeat instead of like you know justin said living from victory Mm. and you know i think we just i see we see it every day and then we see these guys at the end of the year and you see like a 180 transformation because they figured that out now they're living they're finding their contentment in christ instead of you know their day-to-day check off the list stuff that just kind of bogs you down and burdens you yeah i feel like it goes both ways you're either you're either you know feeling like you can do it all and you've got you know being self-sufficient say okay yeah, i'm gonna man up and just do this and, and that's you know that's a false perspective and then or the other side of going and i just i there's no way this is not possible i can't do this mm-hmm. you know and, and you can be self-defeating to the point mm-hmm. of not even being involved rather than saying because of Christ, both sides of the, those lies are, are, are nullified, right? That, yeah, guess what? You, you think you can do it all? You cannot. You need to be broken. You need to be dependent on what Christ has done. And on the other side, when you're going, I, I just, there's nothing in me. Great. Yeah, get, that's right. But Christ can work through that, and that's where he wants us, you know? So it kind of goes to both sides. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Justin, what would, what, what spurred you? Because I remember you came up to me Saturday morning, you're like, hey, I just really am feeling this nudge to share s- this scripture, you mm-hmm. know? Like, what, what was it on Saturday that kind of led you to share this with all the mentors and protégés? Was there a, was there a feeling in the room that you got, like, where, oh, hey, these guys are striving and striving and striving, which is not a bad thing, mm-hmm. but what, what, what led you to share that? Yeah, I don't know if you have any background on that. Yeah, I mean, I wish I had a better, you know, inspiration. I, you know, I just think, it's been a verse. Uh, there's a couple of verses that that are from Colossians that really I've been really looking at over the past couple of weeks and and thinking through and, and kind of yeah you know that vibe of the room of okay what does this look like you know and I had a couple of conversations with some guys that kind of wrestling with both of those sides of either I cannot do this I'm not gonna be able to do this or yeah I mean I guess I could do this you know mm-hmm. why you know it's kind of beneath you know almost the sense of like yeah this seems like a good thing but kind of beneath me maybe and both both sides you know this are we established on this foundation of what Christ has done in act you know empowers us to do what we do mm-hmm. uh, to respond in faith you know and, and so I think that's just a, a powerful especially around around now I think right. with Easter this weekend you know and I'm gonna read this at some point I keep looking at it so <laughs> Go ahead, just, I'm it. gonna read it then <laughs> um, this is Colossians 2 uh, 2, 13 through, through 15, it says, you were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature. Then God made you alive. So first of all, like you were dead, like all of us were dead. Like we are dead in the water. We don't, we don't deserve, and we don't have the capacity to, to save ourselves. Then God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all of your sins. This is my, f- these, oh, these verses are so good. And he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. I mean, that's such a powerful image, right? He canceled the record of charges against us, took it away by nailing it to the cross. And in this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities, and he shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Like, it's not just like, a, yeah, he, he kind of dealt with it. Like, he did, demolished it. <laughs> like, and put the, the, all the, the record of, of, of wrongs and complaints that are, are well-earned on our side. He ripped it up, nailed it to the cross, and then made it a public shaming of those that came to accuse us. And that's just, man, I want to live off of that mm-hmm. rather than my own efforts. Yeah, that's that's really good, man. Uh, wave him down. Wave him <laughs> down over there. He's I, I couldn't move around. If I, if I could move end. away from this microphone. Hey, well, the, the camera's not on you now, so you can get up and walk oh, around. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you know, as we were uh, preparing for this podcast and the topic, I kind of was... Um, digging into some some more scripture today as well, and I was in Romans 6, which kind of talks a lot about what Paul said here in Colossians, uh, but I'll read a little bit of what I wrote down. So uh, Romans 6, sin's power is broken. So you have 6 too. It says, <clears throat> since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten And when we were joined with Christ in baptism, we were joined with him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come <laughs> on, somebody. <laughs> Preach. 
Love it, man. I love it. I, I just, I think that there, and I, I was really challenged, I'm always challenged in this idea of, of what we do as a ministry, right? Like build and equip godly leaders through one-to-one mentorship. And when you look at, well, why do we do what we do? Well, we, we go back to that mission, but we look at like the bigger, like the more in-depth why as well. We, we just believe that, you know, men are called to be godly leaders. Like that's just all there is to it. That's why we do what we do. It's all about that calling. And, you know, I think about that and, and, and I'm like, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but my natural reaction as a man is to say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to grab onto that calling and I'm going to run, I'm going to run with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and as we run down and we set goals and we set objectives as protégés, right, or as mentors, we're there holding somebody accountable to what they want to get done. There is that fine line between that striving and, <laughs> and I'm not sure I have the answer even for listeners or viewers today of like, how do you balance that? Um, but I think having this idea of, listen, it's already been won, uh, this idea of fighting from victory, not for victory. Uh, we don't even deserve to be fighting, right? Like, that's just all there is to it. We were dead. We shouldn't even had a chance to fight. Um, but because of what Christ did for us on that cross, right? Like, nailed to that cross, man. We get to just say, hey, I, I, I should give my best effort because I get to do this. I don't have to do it. I get to do this right. because of what Christ mm -hmm. has done. And so... I look at it from the standpoint of like being a good steward, right? Mm -hmm. Of what God has given me and the opportunities mm -hmm. he has given me. That's what should be driving my, my, uh, my, that should be my driving motivation maybe, or my driving force behind what I want to get done as a protege is that, man, God's given me this opportunity. I need to be a really good steward of it. Right. And not fight for it, but fight from what's already been done. And so I don't know if that makes any sense, but. <laughs> I'm really yeah. I'm just fired up. He's He's fired up. Just bringing the heat over here. <laughs> Steve reading from Romans. Just man, this podcast just got crazy. It just got really wild. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I, I I love it, and I think it's it's going to be a driving force behind you know some things that we have to as a ministry really say. How do we better equip proteges mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically with this sort of a mindset? How mm. do we do that? How do we encourage? guys in that route so right and i think you know we talk about this a lot as an organization maybe not enough but we get lost in that day-to-day -day, um, task as well when we're we're sending out emails and going to meetings and we lose sight of what we're ultimately doing this for right. and i think this you know this podcast and this topic is speaking to us and i hope it's speaking to somebody out there as well amen amen man well good stuff well let's uh let's kind of talk about um, a little bit about what was going on this month with Men of Iron for some of our listeners that might want to know a little bit of an update. We, uh, we had our Lancaster, Pennsylvania regional launch and mm -hmm. training weekend this past Saturday, March 24th. And I think roughly what, 290 yeah. mentors and protégés, 290 men, 15 uh, churches, 15 churches and like communities in there. Um, yeah, it was awesome. Just a great day. Really, really good day. I thought the training went really well. Um, but overall, man, we're just grateful that God allows us to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, really excited about what, what could come from, you know, the change in the culture, right, that, that could happen from this. And, and again, I always say this, but we're in the trenches as a staff. We're in those trenches of ministry right. every day. And so I've noticed that when I'm in the trenches of, like, getting the stuff done and and going about and move, maneuvering through the trenches, I need to intentionally stop and like pick my head up out of the trenches to actually see what's going on around us. And, um, you know, I got a little bit of a taste of that today at lunch, you know, as we met with the previous protege in the ministry who's now serving as a mentor and just saying that there was nothing crazy dynamic that happened as a protege in his strong 27 experience, but it was exactly what he needed to pull him out of this, like, state of depression like he needed it and he shared that with justin and i That's and awesome. so oh man i just want to see more victories like that mm -hmm. um yeah and i think we we brought on a new guy didn't we yeah we yeah. brought on a new guy this past week we should get him on here uh, silver fox <laughs> <laughs> uh, otherwise known as a silver fox and so obviously we've been, uh, we've been tied up and committed <laughs> to getting justin around uh 
the central Pennsylvania area and hopefully start moving them out to Ohio and down to Florida <laughs> a little bit to see some of our advocates in New Jersey as well. And, um, yeah, so we're just, we're super excited about, about Justin and that's been the biggest thing, but, uh, it's always good when, when G takes you somewhere warm like Florida, especially in the winter. Yeah. We always try to book January, February, March. <laughs> <Yeah. Florida. So. laughs> and I'm a Jersey boy, so, you know, I'm happy to go back to my old stomping ground if they'll have me, Joyzy. Joyzy, oh, yeah. old new Joyzy. I, I used to say dog and water like that, and <laughs> and I, there's T.J. Musidis, owner, oh, founder of Walk in Love. Water, water, <laughs> water ice, water ice, water ice. Yeah, uh -huh. down yeah. there, and it's hoagie, not sub, by the way. <laughs> Steve loves Philadelphia, I do. New Jersey. I do. Just <laughs> loves it. Look at well, it. Just gets so, <laughs> he just radiates when it. I love Philadelphia, but then there's a big distinction in between North and, and South Jersey. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. I really yeah. like South Jersey people. I don't oh, like yeah. South Jersey people. Uh, North Jersey? Not so, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, that was a joke. That was a joke. Oh, man. So that's what's new with Men of Iron. Um, anything else we missed? No, I think, you know, May 17th, Thursday, May 17th, we have our fifth annual mm. fundraising dinner. Uh, that happens here in Lancaster. For those of you in Florida, we will be doing one in Florida at some point and also in Ohio yeah. uh, and hopefully in New Jersey. And, you know, we'll keep growing these dinners. But yeah, uh, go to the website, check it out. Yeah, our desire there, that's like a, our goal that kind of we're circling is, you know, to raise $75,000. And, you know, the dollars and cents obviously is, is, is an important piece of what we do, but uh, we look really just look forward to having that night as an opportunity to come out and celebrate what God's doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously the funds help us move it forward. But man, we just, we really just love to see all of our advocates out there and, and enjoy a night together of good food and good yeah, fellowship. Yeah, it's going to be a good night. Good food, good fellowship. Great speaker this year. Yeah, Brian Ziggs. Ziegler. Yeah. Shout out to BZ. So anyway, Stevie, why don't you close it out with some final thoughts? Yeah, so check us out on iTunes. Uh, you can subscribe to the Men of Iron podcast and leave us a five-star review. Yeah, five-star. Yeah, five-star. Not four, not three, five. <laughs> so check us out, subscribe, rate us. Uh, we would love to hear your feedback I'll, as well. I'll tell you what, I'm going to interrupt, and I'm going to tell all of our watchers, all of our viewers and listeners, if they go on and the first one, when we post this, podcast the first person to give us a rating of a five star on itunes, on itunes will get a very very nice new they come in a few oh, weeks man, he's giving away stuff performance Ooh. hoodie branded men of iron black and gray they are slick looking i'm telling you hmm. so justin it does not apply to you ah, i had it <laughs> already uh, so Shoot. if you are watching oh, make sure or listening make sure you go on and the first one that we get notified with uh, get on you there get your performance hoodie mailed to you man that's exciting stuff and a hat and tell you what wow. the second person that does it will get a hat <laughs> all right so first gets a pullover performance hoodie. all right yeah performance hoodie and second gets a hat so get on it yeah so, yeah, we would love your feedback, whether it's on iTunes, leaving us a review, or here on Facebook as well. Um, you can just leave a comment underneath and let us know what you think. Let us know what you'd love to hear us talk about. Uh, if you'd like to be a guest, you can contact us as well. We'd love to have you. We'd like to thank our special guest, JW, the Silver Fox. The Silver Fox wow. himself. <laughs> wow. Thank you to Buck's Lawn Care. Yes, our uh, sponsor today. Our sponsor today. Thanks, Buck. We really appreciate your support. And also thank you to Walk in Love <laughs> and TJ and Brooke. Yep. Uh, for their allowing us to use their facility here for these podcasts. So. All right. That's all we got. All right. Over and out. Blessings, honor, glory, and power forever. Oh. I will praise him.